Yeah, good evening, everyone. Yeah, obviously, Rajni, Nitin Singhania is an outdated book today. So in 2014-15 and up to, as a matter of fact, 2017. Okay, up to 2017, you can go and check this. <clears throat> People who read Nitin Singhania were clearing prelims very easily and mains also the cultural questions they used to answer very easily. So UPSC got to know this and now they are going in depth. Uh, so the only shortcut or straight path which you can follow is read the NCRTs or proper history textbooks. Especially to answer medieval and ancient questions in mains as well as prelims. Rajni, clear? Nitin Singhania, yes, yes. Nitin Singhania will not even help you to clear prelims. Now it's an outdated book. Okay. In fact, uh, at Ramsai, I was taking cultural revision. So I told, even told the students, I think some of them like Jitender, others who were part of that class, they know that I've told them one year back itself that Nitin Singhania is outdated. Outdated in the sense, what all that Nitin Singhania has written, it is an in institute notes. That institute notes is now outdated because UPSC is going in, in much more deep. Okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. See the first question of the day. And you can see these questions also. These questions are not directly found in Nitin Singhania, except for one question, which is the second question. It's not so easy. So, okay, fine. See the first question. The rock cut architecture represents one of the most important sources. It's one of the most important sources of our knowledge of early Indian art and history. Discuss. So very good question, which came in 2020 mains. Yeah, take five minutes and then give the model answer for this. Yeah, good. Rajni. So your structure is more or less good and apt for the answer. So basically what is the question regarding the rock cut architecture represents one of the most important sources of our knowledge of early Indian art and history. So basically with regard to the rock cut architecture, you have to give how it is acting as a source for Indian art and history. Okay, that is the main core aspect of the question. In the introduction, you can <coughs> you can explain what is rock cut architecture. Basically, rock cut architecture is nothing but carving out okay, the caves or the spaces from rocks. Okay, this is the important aspect of the rock cut architecture, and in the body. You will talk about various dimensions of Indian art. So how rocket architecture is varying across the regions. So here you can say art, Indian art, how it is significant with regard to the art, rocket architecture. So you can start from caves like Barabar caves and then Ajanta. Ellora, Elephanta, and then you have rocket architecture, Mahabalipuram, 
ओके दीज आर ऑल एंड देन भीम बेट का दीज आर ऑल रॉकेट आर्किटेक्चर और रॉकेट केव्स वॉट एवर इट इज सो हाउ इट इज हाउ दीज आर गिविंग यू इन साइट इन टू इंडियन आर्ट सो हियर यू कैन सी यू कैन एग्जाम एक्सप्लेन हियर इन महाबलीपुरम दी अर्जुना पेनेस in ajanta ellora in ellora you can talk about kailasnatha temple and in ajanta various chaityas and viharas okay and then in bhimgate ka you can talk about the paintings of paleolithic and mesolithic age so these are the important art dimensions and what do you know about the history history part by looking at the caves what in history can you understand by looking at the caves so you can talk about the lifestyle you can talk about the lifestyle mainly most of them in the early rock cut architecture seems to be they seem to be hunter gatherers hunter gatherers and then with really with regard to the religion this particular architecture belong to various religions like hindus in hindus you can talk about kailasnatha temple and you can talk about again mahabalipuram and in you can talk about it is giving insights into buddhism so in buddhism you can talk about Ajanta caves, Ajanta caves, and how it is giving various chaityas and viharas, and then in Jain religion, you can talk about Sitanna Vasal caves. Okay. and various insights are given here so and then how is the social life and some of the rock cut caves are in trade routes which again represent that they used to act as shelter okay so these are all the dimensions which you can talk about indian art and indian history and then conclude by saying rocket architecture okay here in art you can also talk about mural paintings lot of mural paintings are there in ajanta and ellora so these are some of the extensive rocket architecture is found in indian subcontinent because of its geography we all know that and it gives deep insights into the art and histo history of india that's all and you can say it was spread from around 2500 bce up to 1000 ce so its timeline spread is very huge and also the learnings are also very huge with regard to the rock cut architecture is it clear yes sir yes sir you have written this jitender i don't no, see sir, i wrote next question Sandeep Prasad, you have written. Okay. So, in this particular question, it is always good if you if you can keep two side readings. One is art, one is the history. Is it clear, Sandeep Prasad? Okay, Because sir. The examiner is asking you clearly, right? 
what is art and history so give a separate dimension for art give a separate side heading for history so that he will be convinced that you have answered both the aspects okay religion okay sir society education yes political economical trade routes yes yeah yeah some rock, some rocket caves also had extensive technology of water conservation and all good only suggestion is have separate side headings clear yes sir yeah see the sixth question probably one of the easiest question highlight the central asian and greco bactrian elements in gandhara art yeah fairly simple question probably one of those questions which you can answer by reading nitin singhania highlight the central asian and greco bactrian elements in gandhara art so as you all told a fairly straight forward framework introduction highlighting the central asian features highlighting the greco bactrian features and then conclusion so that is how such easy questions you should write in a very proper framework with good examples and then make the best points and come out because these are very very simple questions which 80% of the mains aspirants will be knowing but the game in getting better marks in such questions is presentation only how better you present these kind of answers the better you get the marks because points everyone will be having similar points your answer my answers everyone answers will be having same points so what i tell will be 90% of your answers so in such cases what we have to do is we have to concentrate on the presentation proper introduction proper conclusion and the body should be to the point without boring the examiner okay so you can say gandhara art which flourished in the north western part of the indian subcontinent was heavily influenced by foreign schools like central asian and greco bactrian greco bactrian so when you write this you are setting the template for the examiner and you say you are saying that you are you know where this gandhara school of art is you for further you can write gandhara school of art which predominantly patronized buddhism and was present heavily in northwest indian subcontinent was influenced by foreign schools like so how is this introduction someone has any better introduction i am welcoming it you have anything better or this looks good for you people yes or no yes sir i'm just adding during question not only kushanas shanta it was during the indo greeks also kushanas patronized gandhara school of art and hence it was more prominent during that time yes sir okay kushanas were one among the foreigners who patronized gandhara school of art but it it existed for many centuries before and after also that's why we say right gandhara school of art what is the timeline 3rd century bce to 3rd century ce so kushanas are not there at this point of time okay rajini clear okay sir yes sir so in the body again it's a very straight forward answer here what are the elements of influence 
first what is the question central asian so first put the side heading central asian elements of central asian so what are the various elements of central asian okay <clears throat> they they have used stucco okay they have used more of stucco that is one of the elements of central asian okay the clothing pattern of buddha like the angavastras etc are somewhat similar to the central asian style curly hair which is a prominent feature of gandhara buddha is borrowed from that okay and the halo halo around the buddha projecting his divine way of look is a central asian feature okay so these are some of the prominent central asian themes of the buddha of gandhara school of art and then coming to the elements of greco bactrian greco bactrian so what are the elements of here it is bluish gray sandstone very prominent feature bluish gray sandstone okay and here the <laughs> buddha resembled the apollo god of greek culture apollo is the supreme god so buddha tried to represent it was tried that buddha represent this particular apollo god in this particular uh, greco bactrian influence okay then ornaments on buddha more masculine so he was like more masculine with proper uh, looking you know very masculine in nature okay and the jaw jaw of buddha was very prominent <coughs> so these are the important dimensions with regard to buddha's influence from central asian and greco bactrian okay here you can in, in the conclusion you can say the confluence of various arts various art schools in the ancient india culminating in the gandhara school of art is yet another sorry what happened it's gone the confluence of various schools of art in gandhara which culminated in sorry which culminated in gandhara school of art is yet another testimony to the concept of unity in diversity in indian subcontinent the school during its zenith was a very important learning center takzila is near gandhara learning center especially for buddhism awesome. fine yes sir so we are trying to bring the concept of idea called india also into this answer without deviating from the core demand of the question clear is it clear yes,
Yes. See the seventh question. The early Buddhist stupa art, Buddhist stupa art, while depicting folk motives and narratives, successfully expounds Buddhist ideals. Elucidate. Good question. Take a couple of minutes. Yeah. What is the framework? No what answer for this? No response. Okay, Rajni, you have not written. Who has written? Sir. Jitendra, you have written? Sir. Oh, in the previous question, you have not seen the model answer, right? Bactrian. One second. Bactrian. Yeah, what are we? I don't know if you are in the class. Good answer. But only thing is you can have the separate side reading. Separate side reading for this or separate side reading for this. Good. Fine. Okay, anyhow, see this question. So here, what they're trying to ask you is, what are the important parts of, not what are the important parts. Why is it coming in Hindi? So, yeah, these are Buddhist stupas. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. So they are asking you not, you know, what are the various parts of stupa? See the question very clearly. This is a very confusing and tricky question where the students might go wrong. They are saying, asking about what are the various parts of stupa and what are those parts reflecting about Buddhist ide ideology? Are you able to understand? That's yes, why some of, you, some of you might have found tough and not written the question because you could not understand the question. The question is not about what are the different parts of stupa. That different parts of stupa, if you, even if you read Nitin Singhanya, you will easily write. Okay, but any cultural text, culture textbook you can write. But the challenge of this question is they are asking you what are the different parts of stupa and how are they going to give us the idea of Buddhist ideology? So this is how a stupa looks like. If you see, this is the Buddhist stupa. Okay? The entrance, this particular entrance, this is called Torana. The entrance is called Torana. This entrance is called Torana. Okay? So this Torana, what it depicts? It depicts about the how, how do you enter a particular spiritual path? Okay? And it this if you see this Torana delicately, there are a lot of uh, stairs. You see here? Are you able to see the zoomed picture? Are you able to see the zoom picture? Yes, sir. You see this Torana? There are a lot of motives, right? You can see here or not? Lot of motives. So this shows the stories. What are the stories called? 
those stories are called jataka tales these folk motives which we call they represent the jataka tales you can see there is so much of so many elephants are there ashoka chakra is there so within this torana itself there are lot of stories so they are going to give you lot of information about the buddhism and buddhist way of life and also about the life of buddha so basically intro you will give stupas give lot of information about buddhism okay and basically they have relics of buddha or the bodhisattvas and they give lot of information on buddhism so in the body you will draw somewhere you know if not exactly you can just draw sorry you can just draw a small stupa you know which is representing like this there is a torana and then here there is harmika and then here it is this is anda so you can mention this anda harmika and this is chatri this is torana and this is circulatory path also called as prajakshana path or something like that so the first is the torana what is torana talking about buddhist stories also called as jataka tales and the grand entrance to stupa this is torana fine this is about torana then see after torana what is the next important part you see this is a circulatory circulating path are you able to see after torana this is the circulating path this is a circular path are you able to see this yes sir yes sir just just yes, sir. below the anda okay so here next important prominent path see you have to talk about how these particular aspects of stupa are giving you insights about buddhist philosophy or buddhist ideology so what is the circular path giving you it is representing an earth so circling around earth okay and also revol revolving around sun okay basically this particular circulatory power says that one should be dedicated and have a right path to achieve higher goals in life or higher levels of life so that is about circulatory path next come what is there you see this is the anda you see the x shape right anda are you able to see the anda yes sir okay so next important aspect is anda so what does this anda show it shows anda means it is a shape of egg what does egg represent it represents the form of life okay and also death this anda represents form of life form of death so basically it represents the power of universe or properly called as cosmic power and then comes your harmika this particular part is called harmika this part is called harmika this part is called harmika okay harmika okay harmika harmika gives you what is needed 
to achieve the middle path what is needed to achieve the middle path in buddhism that is given by harmika basically it talks about nirvana or the sacrifice or foregoing of materialistic pleasure so that is the importance of harmika and finally is the chatri finally is the chatri you see the chatri here this is the chatri the final this three at the top of the stupa are the chatris so what is chatri says chatri obviously it is the apex part of the stupa it shows the parinirvana or the ultimate aim is to become the bodhisattva bodhisattva and it also propagates the dharma of buddhism dharmic way of life so you can conclude that while stupas are themselves some of the greatest architectural wonders architectural wonders they also propagate buddhist philosophy <laughs> and way of life fine clear yes sir clear everyone yes sir yes sir So Rajni has not written. Jitender has written. Mm hmm. Good. Good. Conclusion can be slightly better, Jitender. Yes, sir. I will add it. Fine. See the last question of the day. Mesolithic rock cut architecture of India not only reflects the cultural life, not only reflects the cultural life of the times, but also a fine aesthetic sense comparable to modern painting. Critically evaluate this comment. So very very good question. Take couple of minutes and uh, answer it. Okay, see the question carefully. Mesolithic rock cut architecture of India not only reflects the cultural life of the times, but also fine aesthetic sense comparable to modern painting. Critically evaluate. Comparable to modern painting. Critically evaluate. So, what do you mean by critically evaluate? What do you mean by critically evaluate? Anyone? So it's so like both positives, negatives in our economy or politics sense. In this history yeah. sense, futures, contrasting futures, and similar things. Exactly. Very good. So in this particular sense, he is asking you to compare this Mesolithic paintings. with modern paintings so what are the common features because he is saying comparable so in the statement he is giving that there are lot of common features first establish what are the common features and then give what are the uncommon features and then in the conclusion you can give how the painting has evolved in the introduction you can say painting was there from paleolithic age and slowly evolved up to the modern age over a period of time then in the body you will mention what are the common and what are the uncommon features and in the conclusion you can say how paintings have evolved 
and in the modern era they are they have reached the zenith of imagination is the framework clear yes sir this is very very important if you write just the cons if the, if you write simply what are the features of mesolithic painting and what are the features of modern painting you will get very average marks if you have to get good marks you have to understand the core demand of the question which is critically evaluate so the question is saying there are a lot of commonalities first establish what are the commonalities and then come what are the uncommon features and then conclude is it clear everyone yes, yes sir so now just look see what are the common now that you have understood the introduction and the conclusion let's see what are the common features what are the common features between mesolithic and modern paintings so what are the common features tell me there are modern paintings are also there are about some paintings are regarding the natural phenomenon even in modern paintings there are some paintings which are related to natural phenomenon yes or no yes day to day life paintings so in mesolithic age there are lot of here you can write hunter gathering scenes in mesolithic painting in here it is daily life painting daily life paintings example here is bazar ghat paintings remember during british yes yes sir here animal motifs are common in mesolithic age here also there are sometimes animal motifs especially in the paintings of m f hussein some paintings are related to fertility in mesolithic age even in modern age some paintings are related to fertility example madhubani paintings see see the scope of the question such a beautiful question where you have to put in knowledge put in the entire knowledge of your art and culture okay so that is about the commonality now coming to the uncommon aspects what are the uncommon or the differences you can say differences are here most of them are on rocks or caves in mesolithic in modern they are on canvases okay they are on canvases or proper cloth etc limited colors limited colors extremely vibrant colors limited themes again extremely diverse themes okay and then they are very natural in nature because they are reflecting the way of life natural in nature reflecting way of life these are artificial in nature sometimes not reflecting way of life and these are basically reflecting the culture of mesolithic life they not always reflect the culture 
and then in the conclusion you say the paintings have come a long way right from the paleolithic age mesolithic age and then up to the modern age so the paintings have evolved with the way the humans have evolved today the paintings may not reflect the aesthetic sense of i don't know they may have aesthetic sense but they do not reflect the naturality of way of life like in mesolithic or paleolithic age today's paintings must have definitely more technology when compared to ancient paintings while there are some commonalities there are some significant differences which makes both the kind of paintings the architectures unique in their own way clear here you are not saying we are not trying to take a stand that this is equal to this or this is not equal to this we are saying this is unique and this is unique that is where why we are studying both of the paintings the examiner is trying to say mesolithic is equal to modern but we are saying it may be equal it may not be equal but both are equal in identity for me as a history student mesolithic rock culture is equal important as well as the modern art paintings clear yes sir others clear yes sir yes sir who has written this question anil not written shanta we have done vasavi we have done jitender we have done shriram is not there rajnu you have written yes sir i have written mesolithic the timeline is wrong Okay, when you are writing timeline, be confident, or else don't write. It is up to five thousand BC, and it varies across the Indian subcontinent. The southern part of Indian subcontinent, Mesolithic age is even up to four thousand BC. Okay. Okay, we return the differences, commonalities. So, Rajni, you understood our the framework, right? Yes, sir, I understood. I missed the commonality part while okay. interpreting the question. Because the question is critically analyzed, right? So you have to support the statement as well as. we have to contradict the statement and then finally give the conclusion okay and being one of the toughest questions if you even attempt it with the proper framework you will get very good marks clear yes sir okay so tomorrow you will be having class slightly earlier okay uh, that is only for tomorrow i think i told you already uh, you will be getting the questions after the class i asked vijay to post so he will be posting the questions as soon as the class is over so please try to submit your answers by 4 you will be having the class at around 5:15 5:30 i will be closing before your political science class for just tomorrow Okay, again from day after tomorrow we'll have the regular timings. So tomorrow, please note and even tell your friends. I asked Vijay to post it in the group. I think he will post it. So even if he doesn't post, you please inform your friends. Okay, tomorrow we'll meet at five thirty. Okay.